Hi everybody, this is instructor Phil Dimitriotis. Today we're going to be talking about how to draw organics. This is part of our assignment that we're working on right now. So if you go back to our class blog, this is for Fullerton College. And um, our demonstration today we're going to be talking about, uh, we're working right now in Cambodia. And we're taking a look at designing four locations for uh, a very popular and famous temple, one of the seven wonders of the world, Angora Wat, okay? And so first thing I want to do, so I just looked at thumbnails today and a lot of students get a little confused. I thought this would be a good two-part demo. The first part of the demo, we're going to talk about what to do and what you might not notice in the reference, which is really important. We might draw over a little bit of the reference and talk about what we're actually seeing. These are things that a lot of students tend to overlook. And then after that, what we're going to do is um, I want to show you some work from Paul Phillips and Michael Swinner real quick that deal with environments. Um, and then after that, I'll do some drawing demos for you. Okay, so I might break it into two parts. So first thing, let's take a look at what's happening here. And I grabbed a couple of these images. I wanted to throw them into Photoshop really quick for you. But some of this I can point out here. So I gathered this reference and I put it up on the blog site for you just to sort of give you um, some guidance. Now this is like a, a low three-point upshot because uh, we're looking up at these trees that are converging up to a vanishing point. So this is sort of like a, a hill shot with a lowered camera with a different, you know, uh, angle of view that's pointing upward, right? Um, because of this shot, just look at some of the reference that's in here. Look at these huge curves right here of the mountains. So if I, sh if I had a little Imagine if you had a little post-it next to you and you were to write down little things you're going to notice in organics, right? One of the I'm going to go ahead and do that as I'm talking here. One of the first things I would write down right now would be hillsides and rocks, okay? So let me write that down really quick so we're all on the same page. So whenever I start any environment or working on any piece of concept art, this is the first thing that I do is I write down little suggestive details that I pick up in my reference that I can remember and I can apply later. Okay, going down to this piece here, oh, I love that, mon that monument in here. And I think that's really cool. It helps really, you know, create a lot of historical reference in this particular piece. And it definitely, when you see something that's man-made like that out of stone, it definitely places it in its own little category of temple related customs and or um, historical importance okay um, when I saw this picture right here now the road was a little bothersome to me because that road has obviously been driven on by cars quite a bit but it was really cool look at the slanted trees in here okay there's not a lot of straight lines in here look at the curves happening over here look at this this huge angle right here in this canopy literally growing and connecting from one form to the other and here's the thing that some students think when you draw a tree or a canopy, it has to be connected to the ground. Can you see where this tree is connecting? You can't. You just see it come up here, the branch grows, and then it sort of disappears because it's being overwhelmed by the different type of foliage wrapping around it. And then you have sort of this, this viney structure that hangs down in here. So that's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write that down as well. So when I look at this reference, I have the large tree, I have the foliage, overlapping the tree, okay? Um, and then I have the vines on there, okay? All right, let's continue going down here. When I saw this piece, I thought what was cool is see how you see the river in the back? There's a lot of great imagery there for the reference in terms of having these, you have some different types of palms here on the front, then you have this sort of leafy tree, and then you have a little river in the back. So again, something I'm gonna write down there that I remember is overlap of shape, okay? So I have, uh, a round organic type of leafy tree and then a thin leafy tree overlapping some type of river. So that right there can be a way to really help establish some depth in a picture plane. Um, just come down here. Again, what do I, I already talked about this a little bit earlier when I talked about hillside and rocks. So what do I have here again? Another great little hillside with rocks and I have moss. So I'm going to write that term down so I remember that, okay? Um, really like this reference. Water sort of swaying through. Now this doesn't really, this could be a river or an offshoot of a river, but it also looks a little bit more like a stream. So there's sort of a, a mesh in there. But look at the canopy that groups together here. It's like one large shape, even though there's numerous trees and bushes and different items in there. When you look at it, you definitely get that feel that it is, it's one grouping or cluster. Okay, I thought this was cool. Here you have a 
some type of a tree or vine structure that has so many different leaves that are growing on top of it, um, that would be really important. So I'm going to make up my own terminology for that. I'm going to call that a large vine with, okay, um, I'm going to call it overgrowth. Overgrowth of foliage on it. Okay, so that's something else I could use. Okay, so right there, and then I have all this other reference that I put up for you guys on Angora Wat, the ruins, uh, the vine structures, and there's some great reference in there. Also, when you look at the leaves too, different pointed leaves for different areas of the world, not to get too meticulous, but it does make a difference sometimes, especially if you have an environment that might be underground or um, in caves, there's a different type of leafing structure because limited light that's available. Um, anyway, so if I scroll back up here to the top, I also gave you the live cam, this wonderful shot here that if you click this and open up, you can actually spin around inside this location. So I mean, everything is here for you guys to develop the artwork and to uh, create something successful. Let's wait one second just for this to load. Yes, we know that already. Just show us the image. There we go. Boom. Let's let that, that this, uh, let it. so any of you outside of this class that are interested, that just happen to be watching the YouTube site, this is called Air Pano, uh, just A-I-R, that's my dad's name in Greek, by the way, Pano, P-A-N-O, okay, and so just right there, that's a great title because look, they have all these different locations, and what's really cool is I'm actually looking right now at a recording that's been done of Angora Watt, and I could come through here, look at that huge curved tree, it's right in there okay there's some really nice foliage great ruins rocks I can look right down on top of something I know that gets you a little dizzy but I could even take a shot like that and take a screen grab of it okay um, you can even click some of the different views and it goes back there it's just an amazing site for reference the fact that you guys have reference like this and back in my day we were cutting out images from National Geographic magazines and having to put them in there. But look at that. That's a wonderful temple shot right there. And there's no reason why you couldn't literally take that, draw on top of some of that, and change it up a little bit and make your own variation off of that design. Okay. So just let me back up there. Let's go back here to, to the, the blog site. So let's let's start drawing a little bit. I want to talk about some, some no's and some do's and don'ts. Um, and then we'll take a look at Michael's work. So one of the most common things that I see that students do, give me a second here, let's get this positioned up here. All right. And let me open it up a little bit wider. So one of the most common things that students do when they're working, okay, let me go ahead and just start to rough this out, is when students are roughing out an environment, oops, give me a second. Sorry, I'm used to my Mac right now. I've been working on my Mac all weekend. And I'm on a PC now. So one of the most common things that will happen is students start with this, and they literally have a straight horizon line. And then they literally have a one-point perspective grid that's in existence. That's just... That's it. And, and then you start building your jungle off of that. Well. Remember, I wrote down those little tips here, so I had my little piece of paper. I talked about moss, I talked about hillside, and then angled hillsides. We talked about rocks, trees, foliage of trees, vines, overlapping of shapes, and large vines with um, overgrowth of foliage. So there's like seven or eight different topics there that I need to incorporate. And what happens is a lot of students, they come into this design and they start doing this. And I, I called some of you on this already. And you start giving me pine trees inside a jungle. When we go back and we take a look at most of the reference that we had, okay, oops, how did that happen? Maybe I close the one second here. Oh, let's see, there it is. We come back here, look at the angles and look at the, the curves in here. Look at the, when you think of jungles and when we mention the word organics, you need to think of organics and you need to think of circles. So you need to find a way to incorporate round circular shapes and angled curves inside your drawing, okay? Um, you don't want, you want to avoid, now I know this, someone might be like, well, there's a vertical there and another vertical there. I know, but that's a different photo, okay? When we look at the majority of really good jungle reference, think of what jungles do. They grow and they expand and they grow out like nature does and vines wrap around other 
trees and other bushes and nothing is going to be totally symmetrical so what you want to do when you start drawing you want to make sure that you avoid some of that in your work here so once you get in here and you start doing stuff like this you know and you have foliage that's coming up in the back and you have these straight trees what's happening in here is that you've basically killed part of the drawing and the way that you killed it let me switch to red here is you've put four giant verticals inside here Okay. Well, even technically, there's six for both sides. And the verticals kill the piece because it's not as interesting. So if, if I'm going to mock out an environment, what I like to do, let me back up here, see how far I can go. Keep going, keep going. So I mentioned about the curves. Okay. So one of the first things I do is I don't start with a grid. Oh, and is awesome. Okay, so I start with this, let's say right but then I come in here and I throw something down that's just a little bit different that's like this I throw a curve in there I want to have some organics then I come over and then I start to wrap part of this with a grid to get a feeling of what that hills doing and how it's manipulating how it's twisting and bending okay so when I go to my thumbnail process I'm immediately thinking about what's taking place when I go to put trees in here Okay, I'm going to be thinking about foreground, midground, and background. I might think of something I have immediately in front of me in the foreground, then then develop the rest. But look, even now, if I come in here and I just start to, to let's sketch something here in the midground a little bit, put another little here hill in here. You see how much more depth I have in my piece now that I've just created with those angular curves. And look, I could still come in here and say, hey, guess what? Giant hillside. I don't know how it's going to fit in right now. I'm just going to rough it out. I'm trying to avoid all these verticals, and I'm trying to get in there and have some other lines that are going to be a little bit more interesting. Okay, first thing I do when I start sketching out an environment is I come in here and I map out an idea or a rough idea for what some of these curved organics might be. And this is where I try to, it's a little harder on a Cintiq, but I turn my pencil sideways and just start sketching and try to get a good feel for what some of my shapes might be. And even if I get like this line in here, I don't know if that tree right now is gonna be a dedicated tree, or some of this might be foliage that might be hanging off the edge right here, okay? So, you know, I just sort of rough it out, try to wrap some rubber band shapes around what I have to get an idea of the shape and form that's taking place, okay? Let's see what else I can do. I can come in here, I might have a couple leaves that are coming at through, through part of this back in here. Thinking about foreground, overlapping. I might have, I'm just going to sketch something real rough in here. A couple other leaves, something else overlapping in here. So I haven't defined any of this now, but I'm avoiding this. I'm avoiding that, and I'm avoiding that right there. That kills a drawing. That is a 90 degree angle with a vertical in it. So avoid that in your jungle scenes. Come in, start sketching these organic shapes, thinking about what is overlapping. So right now I've done sort of foreground. I'm on just... Look, I'm on one layer. I haven't even, in fact, I didn't even take the dumb lock off the layer because I'm just in demo mode, right? So look, just one layer. So I'm just going to leave it that way. Here, I'll put another layer on the top for the background in case there's something I want to change. So um, let's come in here. I'm going to imagine maybe there's a part of this sways over and there's something in the back here. A little bit more foliage or something hanging over here. Maybe there's something that curves down here. It's a vine. So remember, I'm remembering the reference I looked at, vines that had other little vines growing on top of them that had lots of foliage sort of around them and to the side. Okay, so there, I've mapped that out. And then I'm going to come in here and think about something that's inside the midground. Now, what's really important to me, you're just key, key reads right now. If I come in here and if I start drawing, like, okay, there's one tree... And then there's another tree and a bush. It, it, I, I've killed the drawing. It's going to be too detailed, right? So what you need to do is think about shape variations. So one thing I haven't addressed yet in my composition here, and here's the hard thing about organics. You sort of have to figure out the organic world itself and then go back and decide where a lot of you guys are beginners. Where's your focal point going to be? What is it that you want to take me to? On, on part of our location, I told you to give a jungle to temple view. So to me, that's going to be an 80 or 90% jungle with like a 10%, 20% view of the temple. So I'm going to imagine, you know, if I go to rule of thirds and think I could have my temple in one of these four locations, that's great. Okay. Let's say I decide to have it back in here. So what I'm going to do, let me 
undo these four marks right here. Let's say back here, I'm just going to rough it in. I have some type of structure. This is part of my temple in the back. Okay. So that's all I need right now. I don't need anything more than that for my thumbnail. I just see where the, you know, I could get in there and go, well, okay, that's looking a little Star Wars. Okay, maybe there's a, maybe there's another building here. Maybe there's stairs that go up there. That's fine. I could design that later. However, though, back to mapping out foreground, midground, and background, I need to think about visual shapes. And so visual reads. I have a nice overlapping shape here. I, I need to have, I'm just going to draw it real rough. I need to have something in here like this. I need to have something that blocks the viewer from seeing this whole left-hand side right here. Do you see that? And keeps the viewer pointing back into the focal point over there. So what I'm going to do is just think about, you know, what if I have some type of, you know, really large shapes in here that connect down, and that's going to be one mass shape. It's going to be one visual read. So I might come into this visual read later, and then I could identify um, that this might be, you know, there might be a couple trees in here. There might be some palm tree leaves that are coming off in here. There might be a curvy branch system that's part in here, part of that might be covered a little bit there might be some stuff hanging out the side here you know and so this is all like just jungle mass foliage right just going for the positive and negative shapes right now just defining some of that out in my thumbnail now i have to sort of interpret where does this hit part of the ground plane so what i like to do is a lot of times when i'm working just a great little cheat for creating depth in a piece is establishing a, a, a base walking path. So if I come in here right now, and again, this is just a thumbnail. So look, I might decide, hey, here's part of my walking path. This is leading from here, it's going in there. And then I might have some of that path zigzag back around here. And obviously the path is getting a little bit smaller. Okay. And then I might even see some of that path go back into here. Maybe even zigzag another time or two. And so just now, look at the, the depth I create with that path where I have something going from the foreground to midground, traveling back in here. And what's really cool about paths is paths are created by multiple things. It's not just dirt with a, a pathway through the dirt. It could be dirt that ends, and then it could be different types of foliage. It can be a pathway of a little bit of a water or a river. You use those pathways to your advantage to get the environment to work, okay? Now, over here, I'd have this large shape that I was working on, right? So let's come over and let's place some other little shapes in front of it. Maybe I have another, just rough this out, some type of weird looking palm tree. I have some other medium sized bushes. I might come over here and decide I have some, some rocks, other elements. Maybe there's some more bushes and other elements here. Th this is not. My goal is not to get my viewer's eye to look right there. It's not. My goal is to get the viewer to look back over here at the focal point, okay? However, though, I want them to feel like they're in this organic environment. In order to get that feel of that organic environment, I'm going to have lots of curves moving through my environment. Look, I have curves in here. I have curves coming up in here. I have a curvy, windy road. I have a hillside at an angle. I have another hillside going at another angle going over there. Okay, all right, so this is just my thumbnail. Remember, it's not a finished drawing, so then I might come back in here. Oops, let's switch back here. So I'm back here. There might be some other foliage, or I might see some other shapes in the back. There could be a little bit of waterway that breaks into part of that road. Okay, and then I might decide, you know what, this is really jungle, Phil. It's not, maybe I need to have the foliage even a lot higher coming up, and it's like overlapping, and it's just huge huge trees. In fact, I could even say, well, what if there's a mountain there? Ah, and there's a waterfall that's coming off or something. And then that part of it drops down into the city. So if that's a mountain, that means this whole area up in here might be a raised hill then with more foliage on the top. There might be some indications of rocks or whatever in the back here like so. So you see what I'm going at here? I've already developed enough in this rough thumbnail here for me to work off of. I mean, I just like to thicken my frame just a little bit. There, okay. 
So that, that's a rough thumbnail right now, and look at what I have. I have this huge tree in the foreground that's curving. Okay, I have definitely have 90% jungle, right? 10% location in the back here. And then I can come back and define that location. I can look at my reference, make sure I'm matching up with the culture and the historical background of that building. I can even come back in here, just as I look at this composition now, I realize, look, I have a flat right there. I don't want that flat right there. So I wanna have, oops, lots of curves in here. So I might find a way, how do I get another curve coming down in that direction? So what if I come in here, put some more trees, and try to bring this down a little bit more. And maybe there's some other trees coming around the side here. So I end up having stuff here in the foreground, midground. Does that all make sense? Now it's a little hard to see. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I like to do this option in my own work. I'm gonna switch to, I have this blue. Okay, I'm gonna take just this blue here. I have the soft brush from awesome um, Shadi Sadafi, right? I'm saying his name right he made some awesome brushes he put on the internet thank you for doing that because they're really fantastic okay I'm gonna drop this down to about 20 percent and I'm just gonna come in here and I want to separate this out separate this foreground element out okay I'm gonna come back over here let's get that separated out that separated out I should have gone with maybe a 30 or 40 percent but that's okay Let's get this separated a little bit more, like so. There we go. Okay, so just right there, it allows me to see a little bit more of the environment. Now I'm going to drop down to like 10% and then come down here and do some of these other bushes in the midground lighter. Just to separate this out a little bit. I ended up doing a 20 going over it again. Okay, so that's it. I'm just gonna stop right there. That's one thumbnail for me. Then I go do another one and another one, right? And we do about 10 more until we find elements inside there that you're liking, okay? So real quick, before I, so hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit in terms of where I started with, I left and I ditched the 90 degree angles right away and I went right into huge curved organics and I figured out how that's gonna push. Now one of the hard things about doing demos is I can't always show you like, here I have a recent piece that I did. Um, where is it? Let me pull it up in Photoshop. I did this uh, last semester here. I'll pull up both versions of it. Let me bring this up. Okay, so here's a jungle environment that I did. Let's look at the black and white. It might be a little bit easier to see. So one of the first things you see is look at these, look at this huge curving tree shape that's coming in here. Don't worry about tonal and light. All that comes later. Just focus on getting the composition plugged together first, right? So look at this tree shape. It's giant. And then there's this little village like here rested up above. I like the idea of these giant tree uh, trunks coming down into the water and that this little village is built up on top of it, right? So then I came in. So look, what's foreground in here right now? So if I draw on top of this, okay, when I when I did my thumbnails and put this together, actually another way I like to do thumbnails sometimes is I just fill with a lasso and line and then I run it through a filter real quick because then it just allows me to see shapes. But when I put this together, actually, hold on, we can't get, I need to change it to... Um, Hold on one second, image adjustment or mode. Uh, go back there, image mode. And we need to go to RGB color so we can see with color. See if it did it. Yeah, it did. Cool, so let me change back to another brush here. So, you know, when I was working on this, look at what's happening in here. Look at this, hold on, let me get the line. There you go. Look at that sway coming in this way, All right? Look at this angle right in there, boom. And look at this huge curve coming back in here. And then I tried to replicate some of that coming back in here with another curve bringing you back in that direction, right? And then it's mim mimicked again right back here with another curve. A nice huge organic. Look at this right back in there. Brings us back up into here. Okay, so that's how I used part of the curves and the directional lines of my organics to blend part of that environment together. So let me back up there a couple steps, right? Next thing I did were the paths. Remember we talked about the paths? 
I don't have a dirt path there, but what I did is I used the water to my advantage. The main water path goes like this. Wow, that was the Cintiq wigging out. Okay. That's the main water path right in there. Then I put some secondary paths where the water would break off and sort of go over here, and then it would create these little, like, little streams and little, like, links, okay? That way to break up the foreground a little bit. So there's another use of organics, okay? And then, of course, I had to put a waterfall in here because, you know, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, waterfalls, organic, jungles, and so on. So what I thought I would do is I would separate the first when I did this is I did this first. Because I had this raised element with just a waterfall, and I liked it so much, I literally just copied, duplicated, put that back here, and then added more to it and faded it off with some lost and found edges. Just to create, so what you're not seeing in this piece that I did is you're not seeing, even though there is sort of a flat grid line though, there's flat grid here, but then look, then this, with the trees, the grid jumps up and it angles and then it settles here. So I, we talked about this when we did the uh, interior of the factory sketches and applied perspective, put things at multiple elevations. If you have things at different elevations, it's much more interesting to the viewer. Okay, let me back up here a couple of steps. So that was part of my goal on this, was by having this raised a little bit higher, this a little bit lower, and then this down here, I've created one, two, three elevations. Okay, I was also going for three key visual reads. Foreground, midground, and then this is bit background in here. Okay, three reads. One, two, three. That's it. Okay, no more. If I do any more, it's funny because when I was working on this at grad school and undergrads, like, dude, why don't you put another house over here? And I'm like, dude, if I put a house here, it would kill it because then I'd have more detail back in here. I don't want you to look back here. I want you to look right here. That's why the biggest area of contrast is sort of right here. And then the second area of contrast is back in here, where I want you to look back to realize that this location, this village is surrounded by part of this right here. Okay? All right, so let's go back to the thumbnail really quick here. Let's pull up some work and take a look. We have a couple more minutes before next class comes in here. Let's go back and let's take a look at the awesome Paul Felix, okay? And I feel like I can show his work because I took a class with him 15 years ago back in the day okay um those are paul's thumbnails by the way with the dark and light in there those are thumbnails those are really tiny okay so if you go to my friend uh, john navarez created the unofficial paul felix blog and there's some work up there there's even paul got a hold of all the notebook pages that he gave us and they're up there from his class that we took so john and i were in that class together Awesome notebook pages, all about drawing and draftsmanship. But look at look at the light and the detail in these thumbnails. You can get that detailed. It just takes time and patience. Okay, let's go look at how Paul handles some environments. Right, these are these are also this is stuff that he did for Tarzan. But I want you to look at foreground, midground, and some of the placement that he uses in the simple one to three in terms of the visual reads. Right, look at how. Let me go to brush here. Look at how we have the gorilla up here right in the foreground and then you immediately look here look there's another foreground element and then you have a midground element here and then the rest of the stuff is just light indication of the background really simple doesn't have to be overdone just light smudges an indication that there's something in the background I know they're, they're these are a little dark but you know look here foreground foreground totally offset right then you have midground light smudges in the background so you're going to see the same repetition of pattern and theme happening all the time. Look here. Foreground again. Something that leads us back in here. And now look, why does that lead us back in there? Well, there's an apes right there. Okay. And this is actually, it's a little bit more tricky. It's still a good composition to look at. But those of you that might not know, this is actually a pan shot where we're starting here. And we're starting and then we're finishing like here so he's we this is a camera pan shot oops where we're panning from end to end from this end to that end this end the reason why it goes there is the camera pans down to here and then this trucks along this way okay so that's why that's at a weird angle like that if you didn't know that that's more of a 
you know, film thing is that he wants us to start here and look and then pan out to the right. Then we cut to the scene. It's a way of indicating to the audience of what direction the, the grill is going to be heading or what is he looking at that's important. Okay. But again, what's really important about looking at these is there's a certain simplicity in the way Paul handles uh, buildings, excuse me, foliage, foreground and midground, and places them all together. I like how he wrote this too complex in his notes right here. Do you see that? Why? And then you look at this. This is just sort of one grouping. This is, look at all the silhouettes there. See all that? It's a lot of silhouette, a lot of shape there. This is much more simplified right here. Okay? So don't overcomplicate the foliage. You got to think about this is when we talk about grouping and about bringing your, your shapes and your forms together and not having a million trees in the forest, but instead of having one large group. Okay? Um, look at this up here. Look at how beautiful this is. I know it's a little blurry, but look at the simple read of, look, foreground, okay? And then look, foreground. And then his midground is actually the white shapes here and here, and then the background is the light gray that's in the back. We don't even know what it is. It's just indicated softly there, okay? Another great example. So look at this example here on foliage. Look at how wonderful. Look at the foreground here. That separates. I think, you know, this is one of the things I learned from when I took classes with Paul and then getting to work under Michael Spooner, who was amazing, who is just watching him use foreground and midground and background all the time, too. So look at this, you know, really nice foreground. Look at how that separates. And then look at what's in here in the background. Look at that silo, simple read like that. It's not complex. It's a couple big bushes and trees in their tops. That's all it is. Nothing more than that. And then when you look down here, I don't even, that looks like melted pancakes or Swiss cheese there. It doesn't matter. It's the ground. The ground plane has circles and all kinds of little discrepancies. It has changes from hard dirt to soft dirt to sand to rock to so on, right? You can incorporate those changes in your drawing. Just think about the visual reads. And here you usually see one, come on, little lag there, one, two, three. That's it. Simple. One, two, three doesn't have to be any more complex than that, okay? Stay simple with it. Don't overcomplicate. You don't have to draw a tree that has 15 leaves hanging off of it when you can do three or four. That's all you need to do, okay? Anyway, I have to wrap things up really quickly. The next class is going to start in just a couple minutes. But if you get a chance, take a look at, uh, let me see if I can go just a couple more minutes. Again, foreground, midground, look, simple background. It's just blocked in in gray. That's why I love working on, on uh, vellum or tracing paper, the black prism color pencil. It's really fantastic. I wish I had some time too. I wanted to show you Marcello Vignali and um, Armand Serrano's work that they did for um, uh, Surf's, what is it? The Surf's, up. Surf's Up. I knew that. It was on the tip of my tongue. I'm just busy recording. Surf's Up, right? Beautiful environments. Very nicely done. Two amazing artists. Super nice guys. Um, really amazing stuff too. So, you know, when, when I get in here, oops, let me just go back. Let me see if I can show you Michael's stuff really quick. Sorry, I don't mean to rush this, but I just had a couple pieces here from Michael. One, two, three. There we go. And Photoshop. So you're going to see the same thing with Michael. Even I found one of his paintings here. Look, foreground, and then here's the midground, and then the background is just the sky. But still foreground, midground, background. Simple three reads, okay? Same thing here when you're looking at this. Um, are there a bunch of 90s in here? No, there's not. Look at that wonderful curve. Okay, hold on. I, a massive delay here from Photoshop. Look at that massive curve in there. Look at those. This is for Tinkerbell. Look at those sways and those curls in there, right? And then talking about round shapes, you guys can do this too in your organics, right? Look, round, 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 another large round with smaller rounds inside it. Incorporate that type of design. In fact, if I go back to my thumbnail, the one thing I already felt I was missing was more rounds in there. I have some curves that are going like this way and this way, but then I started thinking, how can I get some more round elements? Maybe I need to bring this structure down here and have a round base, and it's on like a round hill elevating. How else can I make it feel more organic? 
adding rounds and circular shapes are going to do that. Okay, let's go back here, take a look at Michael's stuff. Um, so we, here, let's close that one really quick. And let's close that one real quick. And I thought I had another one in here from Michael. Give me a second. It's this one here. Um, no, that's the one we just looked at, right? Oh, here it is. That's the one we wanted right there. Sorry. Okay, so here, another one, another great example, right? Let me zoom out just a little bit. Look at, you know, look at these nice curving shapes in here. Look at that flowing, you know, curves there, there. Look at the, the hill shapes. They're rounded curves. They're totally organic. There's nothing in there that's going to be at a 90. So hopefully after today's, I know this is a quick demo before class is done, but look at all these curves and the angles. Look at that sway. Look at the hill back in there. Another sway in there. And then round, 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 round. Look at that constant repetition of shapes all curves and rounded edges that is how you do an organic that's how you get into it so hopefully just what i did here quickly that gets you moving along and gives you a better idea of how to transition avoid what some of you guys did some of you guys gave me a, a flat grid plane with vertical trees uh-uh we're not in the pacific northwest that's a different type of forest we are in jungle scenes and you have to learn one of the principles of animation is learn to exaggerate okay and over exemplify a particular environment and to do that you add more curves and you push the organics that's supposed to communicate a particular emotion inside that environment okay all right thanks guys i'll do another demo next class and uh we'll talk more about drawing some some good old environments okay see you soon It didn't record. Wait, hold on. Is it still recording? There it is.